In this video, we're going to take a look at creating objects now. So we have already defined a class. And if we compare what we have done to a procedural ABAP programming point of view, well, what we've done is the equivalent of declaring a type statement. Doesn't sound like much, does it? <laughs> but no, in reality, I guess what we have done, we've created the equivalent of a form or a function module. We put the framework in place to use encapsulated code from within our local programs. What we need to do now is take a look and learn how we create objects based on the class. So the first thing we need to do, as you can see on the slide, it's a two step process. The first thing is we need to define an object reference variable. Now, sounds a bit grand, doesn't it? But all this is, is we're declaring a variable that is just a pointer to an object of a specific class. Once we have defined this pointer, this object reference variable, we can then create our object. And when we speak in object oriented terms, we create an instance of our object. Now, before moving down onto the uh, sort of bit of code on the bottom part of the slide, what I'm going to do is bring up the ABAP editor and we'll add some code at the same time as going through the example. So if I move down here, here's the uh, normal car class. Let's create a bit of empty space. And then what I'm going to do, like with any normal ABAP program, we have to tell the uh, system where we want it to start processing our code. So I'm sure everyone is familiar with start of selection. If you're not, this is what we use to tell the system this is where we want to start processing our code from in our program. So what we're going to do is start of selection. And then we need to declare a data statement because we use the data statement to declare our object reference variable. So we have data. And then what we do, we give it a name. So I'm going to say just simply car one. So I'm going to create an object reference variable called car one. And then we use type, but it's a specific one. We use type reference two, and then we specify the class name. So if you remember, our class was called car, wasn't it? So if I do the code collapse here, let's see if we can get to the top. Here we go. That's it. So um, our type reference to car, which is our object name up there. Sorry, not object, is it? It's class name. Okay, so data car one type reference to car. Then we have to create the object itself. So what we've done is create a data variable that's going to hold an object reference. Okay, we haven't actually created the object yet. We just created a data item, just as in normal ABAP. So the second step to create the object is create, not data, is create object, and then we specify our object reference variable, our car one. So we create it. And that's it. We have now created an instance of our car class. So should we see what actually happens? Well, I guess first thing is I need to do a syntax check, don't I? So let me uh, go back to a full screen, do a check. Great, no errors. So I will activate the program. And then <laughs> when we run this, it's really not going to do anything. If I do a test, that was it. <laughs> that was it. Nothing to show because we're not actually outputting anything, are we? We're not outputting anything to the screen. All we're doing is instantiating an object called car1 and that's it. Nothing more. We haven't called any of the methods within our class to increase the speed, slow it down, set the number of seats and so on. We've just created a basic object. Now, before we go on and use some of these methods, I will just... Um, Tell you what I'll do. I'll put a breakpoint here. 
and then we'll see this in the debugger and you'll see there's there's actually very little to see but we'll just have a look and what gets filled in in the car one variable in in the debugger so breakpoints there i'll do a test here we go it's showing up so now if i just add car one to our variables list over here you can see it's initial at the moment there's nothing there and i should have really put another statement below because i think it might just come out of the uh, debugger but if we do a single step okay it has done something it's gone into the back code if i do a, a step out of this yeah tell you what i'll do i'll do uline here so at least it's going to do something so i'll test it again i'll do the execute and now you can see we're going on to the next line there but now our car one object reference variable does hold a value let's have a look at that and you can see coming down here the object reference itself the, the variable is holding the actual program name and then it's holding um, something that's really internal to to really tell the system it's holding an object reference to the class car and these are the different attributes of that car class now we haven't set them yet have we because we've actually got no way of setting them and we're going to do that next so that's just to show you we can have a look at the object reference variable in the debugger see what it contains and just get familiar with how it looks in the debugger because it's really not like a normal standard variable is it so let me come out of this there's a nice underline i'm going to take away this code take off the breakpoint do a save and then we will move on and we're going to introduce constructors.